Now, I'm really enjoying this current message series that we're in. It's been challenging on a deep level, right? Because I know the Lord speaks to us when we're still before him, uh, but it's, it's difficult at times to be still before the Lord, right? And so it's been challenging in that sense. Not only that we would be still before the Lord, but that we would be patient before the Lord. Patience, right? He is working, and we must trust his purpose and his process in our lives. As we're waiting it out, as we're being still, as we're holding on, as, as we're walking in that moment where we just try to slow down a little bit, we, we have to trust that God is working out his purpose, his plans in our lives, right? We have to trust that. We have to believe that. And sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes I say, Lord, do I really trust you? Do I really trust you? Because right now, if I'm to be honest with my own heart, you know, in those moments, I'm saying, God, I don't know if I trust you because I, I, I'm struggling through this, right? And, and so that's part of our humanity. But at the end of the day, we have to know that he is not human, right? He's not a man that he should lie. He is indeed working out his purpose, his plans for our lives. And so last week, we built on the idea of being still and being patient by talking about being filled with God's spirit and his fruit, we can be filled with many things in life, right? We can be filled with a whole lot of stuff. We can be, you know, Oreo stuffed cookies, if you will, right? But at the end of the day, everything we consume, everything we fill our hearts with, our minds with, our bodies with, is all, will all fall short unless we are filled with God's Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, and allow His fruit to flow from our lives. And that was our takeaway simply last week was to be filled, to be filled with God's Spirit to be filled with his fruit. And at the end of the day, none of us want to be full of it, right? We want to be full of the Holy Spirit, right? And so we don't want to be known as that person who's full of it. We want to be full of the Holy Spirit and allow his fruit to flow from our lives. Now, I will say this. In many ways, I think this series is countercultural. But when I say that, in all reality, in many ways, I realize that Christianity is counterculture. Like it's not, like it doesn't go with the, the norm. And I know there's a lot of people who kind of want to believe or hope that, like, you know, we live in a, a Christian nation or that, that somehow we're going to align our politics with our theology and everybody's going to agree. And, and what I would say to all that is like, not going to happen. Uh, you know, Jesus didn't come to establish his kingdom on earth. He came to proclaim the kingdom of heaven on earth. Amen. And so the, at the end of the day, what we realize in all of that is that Christianity is countercultural. And that not only is it countercultural, but this series definitely has been countercultural because we do not like to be still and we do not like to wait. Right? We don't like to be still. We do not like to wait. And so at the end of the day, this again is countercultural. In fact, I would say this it's easy to fill our hearts and our lives with a ton of content, and completely set aside the instruction of the Lord to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to allow his fruit to flow from our lives. We live in a culture that is bought into the notion, and listen to this, we, been, we live in a culture that's bought into this notion of, you know, busy and hurry and consumption are the keys to happiness. Listen to that. Let that settle in. We, bought, we live in a culture that's bought into this idea that busy, hurry, and consumption are the keys to happiness. We consume mass amounts of food. Well, maybe you don't, but I do. Uh, like, we consume mass amounts of food, right? You, you know, don't you hate that they put calories on everything you eat now? Like, especially at, you know, restaurants, you go like, what? You know, 2,000 calories, man, that's like, what? That's like my whole day's worth of food in one meal. And I'm just at breakfast, baby, like this. We got the whole day ahead of us, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't put that there. I don't want to know. I just want to eat it, right? Um, but we consume, right? We consume. Uh, we eat more food than, than, we, than we need to. We consume more media. We have more experiences. And it's just consumption, consumption, consumption. We consume so much. And in our consumption, we bought into the false gods of consumerism and materialism. Wow. In, in, in our consumption, we bought into these false gods of consumerism and materialism. We bought into the lie that by buying everything we want or everything that we feel that need, we will find happiness. Like, think about it. 
Like we just, at the end of this path, if we just live the American dream, if we just have enough stuff, if we have enough experiences, if we have enough this, that, and or the, and the other, whatever it might be, if we have enough, then we will truly be happy. But how many of you know that you've gotten some really good gifts or things or bought things in your life, and at the end of them, you still felt that like, that's it? right? Even great experiences. And I love great experiences. I love vacations. Anybody like vacations? I love them, right? I love experiencing really good food and all those things. And I'm not saying we we don't do any of those things. What I am saying, though, is at the end of those things, we will not find true happiness. We'll still be left wanting, right? No matter what we acquire, we're left wanting. No matter what we experience, we're left wanting. No matter what we consume, we're left wanting. Because God created us, and this is where we shift for today's topic. God created us to find contentment in Him, not in things. We find our contentment in Him. We truly live a life that we would call as a content life. You know, I had an interesting, uh, we had an interesting staff meeting a uh, week and a half ago, almost two weeks ago now. And one of our amazing staff members said, you know, I just feel so content about life. And I'm like, you suck. Oh, did I say that out loud? I I did, sorry. That's what I felt in my heart. Because I'm like, you know, I just don't feel very content right now. I feel a lot of discontentment. Not about stuff, but just about life. And and, and I feel discontentment. And I got to find a place of peace with that in my own heart with God. But at the end of the day, if I try to feel that discontentment with food, if I try to fill it with experiences and pleasure, if I try to uh, fill it with things, at the end of all that, guess what? I'm still going to be discontented. But if I truly come to the source of contentment, if I come to the Lord and pursue Him and His purpose and His plans and His peace, guess what? I will find contentment. But it's there. It's not found at these other, it's not found at the end of the rainbow, right, of these other things in life. It's found only in Him. He is the source. And therefore, I want to explore for a moment this morning the Word of God and His exhortation to be content. (sighs) I think I'm grumpy through this message series, you know? Um, It's like, be content. And there are several great passages of Scripture to learn from as it relates to being content. And so I want to dig into a few today. And I want to begin our discovery in 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's there that we encounter the Apostle Paul's instructions to his protege, his mentee, Timothy, regarding contentment and possessions. And so let's go there. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. Now, I started in verse 6. Let me read it and then backfill it by one verse. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. You know, Paul is giving instruction to Timothy about how to live and how to lead and all those things, right? Right? And and what he's saying is that some false teachers, right above this, he's talking about some false teachers who believed in all kinds of false teachings, right? And and then it says, and and they've also bought into this lie that, uh, that that godliness is for financial gain. Right? It's kind of like what we experience in, in American culture, this idea of a prosperity gospel, if you will, right? It's, it's, it's this idea that godliness will lead to, you know, possessions, if you will, that godliness will lead to financial gain. And to what Paul, what Paul is saying to Timothy is, hey, hey, time out. Let me give you some instruction here. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. That's where it's at. He's saying, look, if you have godliness, don't worry about the financial pursuit of that. He's saying, look, with godliness, with contentment is great gain. And then he goes on and he gives us a good, good like lesson here. Ready? For we brought nothing into the world and we can't, and, and we can take nothing out of it. Yeah, but I like my shoes. <laughs> but I really like my, you know, Rolex. I don't know. If you like Rolexes, I don't know what you like. Tag Hewer, I, 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 don't, I don't wear watches, obviously. Um, how about rings, you know? Can I, can I take my wedding ring? I wear this ring. You know how much it cost me? $1.99, and I got four of them, and one of them was pink. I don't wear that one. Walmart, if y'all are looking for them. They're great, because if you lose one, guess what? You got a black one to put on afterward. So, 
The bottom line is this, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. We're only passing by on this life. For just the short season, we're going to be here and we want to enjoy it absolutely. But guess what? We can't take any of our stuff with us. I think it was my brother who many years ago, he was preaching here as a guest uh, one, and he said, you know, you can't take your credit score with you to heaven. And I'm like, yeah, but I got a good one. You know? When I look at my mint app, it tells me the world is my oyster. You know what I'm saying? I can do whatever I want with my credit, you know? But am I taking that with me? No. So for we brought nothing into the world and we could take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Food and clothing. In fact, I would venture to say that most of us have too much clothing, right? Most of us. Like, we go into our closets and you're like, goodness, like, you know, I don't even wear that stuff. And some of the stuff we have, we have, and it's there for that just in case, you know. Like, I used to wear those when I was like 21, but I'm 41 now, and I'm just maybe one day I'll fit back into those things. I'm not getting rid of them. Amen. Right? And so we're, so, you know, it's just clothing. If I have enough clothing, if I have enough food, and, and so it's the simple things of life. And you might add to this, you might say, well, what about shelter? Yeah, shelter's a good idea. You should probably have that in life. There, there are some basic things, but what it's saying is, look, look, if your needs are met, then, then be content with that. Live in contentment. Be content with those things and then it goes on, and it says in verse 9, those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Ouch! Slow that one down and read it again. Any entrepreneurs in the house, you're looking at one. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm into things. I like doing stuff, and I like having small businesses and creative exploits and this and that and the other. And, and you know what I realize is that it complicates my life. My life is complicated because of those things, right? And so when I read this, it's not like I'm reading it and saying, hey, you online, pay attention. It's like, hey, Paul, look in the mirror and realize that you're complicating your life. And so those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap. What's the trap? It's the trap of more and more and consumerism and, and materialism. And I just need more stuff. And because at the end of more stuff, I just trapped in here that at the end of all these things, guess what? I'm going to finally feel <sighs> content. But it's a trap. It's a trap. It's like a, it's like a what do they call them? A, a, a Chinese uh, handcuffs or finger trap thing, right? It's like you get in there and you're like, I just need more, I need more. Wait up, I can't get out, right? And so it's a trap. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into what? Ruin and destruction. How many of you read a headline about somebody who was really wealthy that found himself in ruin and destruction? Now let me just, let me just side note here. God's not against wealth. In fact, I'll probably repeat this. God's not against wealth. He's against wealth having us. God is not against possessions and stuff. He's against possessions and stuff having us. And so when we realize that our contentment is not found in stuff, it's in him, guess what? He can give us stuff because stuff's never going to have us. Amen. And so those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. When I was a kid, I'll never forget, you know, I had a friend, Weddle. Remember Weddle? And for Halloween one year, he dressed up as a dollar bill, maybe a Benjamin. It was probably a Benjamin. And, and the title was Root of All Evil. No, 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 no. Money is not the root of all evil. You say, well, isn't that what this is saying? No, no, it's saying, for the love of money. Money is like, it's neutral. Like, it doesn't wake up and say, I'm evil today. 
It's just neutral. It's our desires. It's the human desire. It's the pursuit and the love of money that, that creates all kinds of evil. When you look at the ends of the earth and you look at all the evil, it has to do with money. It has to do with oil. It has to do with drugs. It has to do with the pursuit of all these things, wealth building things that really get a hold of our heart and do what? Lead us astray. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Mo money mo. Whew. That's Bible. <laughs> because for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money, they've wandered from the faith. They've forgotten the faith. They went in pursuit of money. They went in pursuit of business. And, and I don't think that there's a problem with having business in our hearts and in our lives. I don't think there's a problem with being a business owner, with having your name on it. That, that's not what, don't get it confused. But he's saying, look, many have wandered from the faith and they pierced themselves with many griefs because they pursued, again, all of those things. And the apostle Paul as he writes to Timothy, gives him this valid, this, this powerful instruction. But there's more to, the, more to this idea, more to this teaching, because as the Apostle Paul writes also to the Philippians, he gives us what, what I believe and what he calls is the true secret to contentment. If you want to find contentment in your life, you want to experience that, and contentment in your life, you want to you live that out in your heart, in your mind, uh, you know, no matter what's going on, the highs and the lows of life, the, the, you know, the extremes of, of finances or, or, or on either side of the spectrum, right? You want to live with contentment? Let me give you the secret. And so he gives us the secret to contentment in Philippians, and I want to look at verses 10 through 13. It says this. It says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you've renewed your concern for me, He's talking to the Philippians and he's saying, look, you guys were concerned about me to take care of my needs, right? He says, indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I, uh, verse 11, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I've learned to be what? Whatever the circumstances. I've learned to be content Whatever the circumstances of my life, verse 12, I know, that what it, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. He's saying, I, I know, I, I've been there, I've lived a lot of life, I've, I, I've been on the pinnacle of leadership before coming to Christ. I, I had stuff and people and, and, and subjects, if you will, and, and possessions, and, and, and I did all these things, and I know what it's like to be in want, but I also know what it's like to have plenty you know, to have plenty, he says, and I've learned the secret of being, here it is, content. The secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, here's the secret, verse 13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I can do all this, all what? I can do well fed or I can do hung, or I, I, I can do filled belly. I can do living in want or I can do living with plenty. I can do this circumstance or that circumstance. Hardship and heartbreak. I can do mountaintop and praise and experiences. I can do it all. Why? Because he gives me strength in every situation. No matter what it is, I find my strength in who? In him, not in things. Not in things, not in possessions, not in experiences. I find my strength in Christ alone. And I'll tell you what. You don't know what it's like to need Christ's strength until you're in a moment where you need Christ's strength, right? When you could do it yourself, you're just, you're an autopilot. You're like, I got this. And then all of a sudden you realize, I don't got this. <laughs> what am I going to do now? And so Paul is teaching us about contentment. He's saying, look, this is the secret. The secret to all of this, the secret to contentment, is not, the, not, not acquiring more things. It's not, it's not experiencing more experiences, right? It's not eating greater levels of food, right? And it's not, it's not all these things, right? What is it? The secret to contentment 
is that in any and every situation, I can do all things through him who gives me strength, through Christ who gives me strength. What, it's, what we're realizing through that is that in Christ, no matter what set of circumstances we find ourselves in, no matter what set of uh, you know, factors that surround us, right, we can be what? Content. Why? Because I know that through Christ, I can do this. I can do this. Look to your neighbor and say, you got this. More importantly, look to your neighbor and say, he's got you. And so we've got to know that the Lord does have us. And that no matter what we're going through, no matter the set of circumstances, no matter the situation that's around us, God is with us. God is for us. And he wants to lead us forward. He gives us strength. And so contentment and reliance on his strength are paramount. Like walking in true contentment, walking and leaning on the strength of the Lord is paramount. It's, most, it's more important than anything else we can do. And this is affirmed in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. It's there that the writer of Hebrews affirms this teaching that Paul teaches us in both 1 Timothy and in Philippians. It says this in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, keep your eyes, or keep your lives free from the love of money, and what? Be content. And be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. But Lord, I'm in a difficult spot. I'm in a trying situation. I'm in a moment where I, I just can't comprehend. And what it, say, what it says here to us is the affirmation of what we've learned in 1 Timothy, affirmation of what we learned in Philippians. Keep your, your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. You know, I, I've said this in my life, and I, I, it can sound really, I don't know, it can maybe even sound arrogant. Maybe it could even sound like aloof or something. But I've said, this, I've said this, like, money's easy. Like, money's just money. That's, it's easy. You can figure out a way, like, money. But, but it's, it's, the, it's the, what's behind that. It's the love of money. It's the pursuit of money. It's the pursuit of things. It's all that that makes difficulty. And, and, and it's, it's the, 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 the ill-natured condition of the human heart that says me myself and I right that puts me first and in the pursuit of all that wants to push other people down or away none of us here today but you see what I'm saying money's easy money itself that's the easy part it's the relational it's the it's the heart that is difficult so keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said never will I leave you never Will I forsake you? So what we know is that in all things in our lives and everything we pursue and all that we're going through and all the difficulties uh, or financial hardships or financial decisions, it doesn't necessarily have to be a hardship, but a decision that you have to make in that moment. You have to realize God's not going to leave me. God's not going to forsake me. He's not all of a sudden in the middle of my life going to leave me in this situation. No, in fact, he has promised that he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. And so be content. Don't fall in love with money, right? And don't be overly concerned about your needs. God's promise to you and I today is that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And in fact, when we even read on, it says that in Philippians, it says that God and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches. And so what we know is that God's riches will provide for us. I don't know how that always works. But sometimes, you know, the reminder of Jesus was look at the, you know, sparrows and look at the lilies, uh, uh, you know, the flowers of the field. Are they worrying about things, you know, Matthew chapter 6? Are they worried and trying to figure this all out, or are they simply trusting in the God who created them? As I prepare to close, I think about one more thought, you know. My neighbor, Stan, he's on vacation right now, and uh, it's nice, I guess, retirement. You know, you take four-week vacations. And, in, and then my daughter's 
feeding the wild birds and providing, you know, not only food for them, but water for them. And so every couple of days she goes over there and, and he says, you know, I, I don't know. And they're just wild birds, but, you know, I really like to feed them. I said, oh, that's great, Stan, you know. And he's like, well, you know, um, I don't know if they really rely on me or not, but I make sure I put the feed out there. And so what I do know to that is that in any case, it's the Lord who provides. And sometimes he'll use a stand, and sometimes he'll use, use a field full of seeds, and sometimes he'll use my backyard after I've cut the lawn. Any of y'all notice the birds just come hang around? In the morning, one of my favorite things to do is to watch the birds come and eat the worms. It's awesome. They dig around. They fly off, worm dangling, and they go feed their, you know, chicks. But at the end of the day, who provides? The Lord. Who provides? It's God who provides. He makes a way. And so our only exhortation this morning, command, if you will, regulation, rule, all those fun words, right, is be what? Content. You don't have to be busy. You don't have to be in a hurry. You don't have to be all about, you know, getting yourself what you need. No, all you need to do is be content and really rely on the Lord as your strength. And so as we close out today, the instruction of Scripture could not be any clearer this morning. In all things, we are to what? Be content. We're just passing by on this earth. It's not our eternal home. We can't take anything with us. I'd like to take some things with me, for sure, you know? But none of it's going with me. It's all going to stay back on this earth. We're not taking any of our possessions with us, but our souls will live forever. Therefore, in all of our pursuits, we should pursue godliness with contentment. That is where true gains are realized. Investment gains are of no comparison to living with contentment. Investment gains. When you look at the investments and you're like, man, I invested in that and it's grown. Or I've invested in that and yikes, I've lost some money. (laughs) Because it's called risk, right? And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. But in all of that, investment gains are great, but there's no comparison to simply living with the gain of contentment. And so as it relates to possessions and the pursuit of wealth, the Lord, again, is not bothered by us having stuff, but he is bothered by stuff having us. You know, I think about that. I love my truck, right? But then I'm like, it's just a truck. Who cares? I'll sell it. Like, give me, I'm going to sell my truck and get me a Prius because it's going to save me on gas, you know? I used to want the truck. Now I want the Prius, you know. Nah, forget the Prius. I'm going to buy me a bike. And I'm going to ride to work every day. Said nobody ever. No, said some people. Yeah. But it's a great thing to say, you know what? I don't need the stuff. I'm grateful, yeah, I'm grateful for this stuff, but I don't need it. I don't find contentment in those things. I find contentment in my Savior. And so, we are to live free from the love of money and know that our God promises to never leave us nor forsake us. No matter the situation we find ourselves in, we can tap into the secret of contentment, which is what? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can do all things no matter what we go through. Let me give you one last mouthful of a sentence or two here. Instead of the false gods of consumerism and materialism, what if we pursued contentment through minimalism? Let me say that again. Instead of the false gods of consumerism and materialism, what if we pursued contentment through minimalism? In other words, living with less can oftentimes be so much more. Living with less is, can oftentimes be so much more. It's just a thought. It's not a command. It's not Bible, 
You're not going to find any of those words, consumerism, materialism, minimalism. You're not going to find any of them in the Bible, but it's just a thought. What if less is more? And what if we learn the secret of contentment by not pursuing things or experiences or this, that, or the other, but we truly just said, Lord, I'm going to rely on you as my strength. And I'm going to be content in any and every circumstances, whether well-fed or starving. Whatever it might be, I want to be content. And so, Father, we thank you for your word today. And I truly believe it's challenging in a culture that we live in that is so focused on things, on stuff, on comparisons. God, I pray this morning that through this message, through this series, as we're learning to be still and be patient and be filled, and today as we're learning to be content, God, I pray more than anything else, we would truly learn what it is to be content. And that we wouldn't find our contentment at the end of some imaginary rainbow, but that we would find our contentment in you. And into the strength that you give us, God. With everyone reverencing God for a moment, if you're watching online, if you're in this building today and you say, look, I don't really, I'm struggling with contentment. I'm going to tell you right now, the one place that you're going to find contentment, where it starts, is in a relationship with Christ. And So you can pursue all these other things. But without that, you will constantly be searching and seeking for the rest of your life. You will spend your entire life looking for the answer to contentment. But I'm here to tell you today, it's in Christ and Christ alone. So if you've yet to commit your life to Christ, and you want to do that today, I want to give you the opportunity right now to do that. So if you're online and you say, that's me, would you hit the like button? Would you let us know? If you're in this building, would you be so bold to say, that's me? Would you lift your hand right where you're at and say, that's me? God sees your hands. God sees your hands. And now I'm going to ask everyone listening to the sound of my voice, would you repeat a simple prayer of faith with me today? Would you just say, Jesus, today, you are my source. I'm tired of living life my way with my pursuits. I look to you to find contentment, to find peace, to find salvation. I confess you as my Lord on this day. And it's Can we just thank God for his, those that are responding and, and what he's doing in our hearts? And would you stand with me? And let's worship this morning knowing that he is our contentment.